This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen. You see before yourselves a very different setup, and one that I don't think we've used in over what five years. Shay, as yeah, it's been gonna... five years, man. It's been a long time. It's going to be good. Shay, of course, guys. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't even think that video still exists on my YouTube channel. So you wouldn't know Shay's kind of legendary appearance on Dolany TV from back in the day. We had to do a lot of digging to find it yesterday, but that was the cause for opening up this video discussion today. Shay, maybe, uh, maybe explain which NHL team you're a fan of and why that makes you perfect for today's discussion. Yeah, well, I'm an avid Calgary Flames fan. Born in Edmonton, Alberta, but I'm a Calgary Flames fan. Imagine that. Crazy. And uh, discussion for today is the Battle of Alberta. So I think I'm the perfect person because me and Tyson go way back and had a lot of battles back in the day. A lot of arguing in old RTA, Calgary and Edmonton, didn't we? Oh, Frank, man. The, the amount of hockey talk that was going on there compared to the amount of hockey talk in my life now is uh, night and day. There's, I actually had back, I think in November last year, I had Moss on the channel. Uh, some of you guys might know him from Twitter, Edmonton Future Watch, and that was the beginning of this kind of feature series, and now I've got Shay on here. I've only been trying to hunt somebody down to talk with me on the channel forever. Well, Shay and I are going to do that today, and Shay, the first thing we got to talk about with Battle of Alberta, you said it the same exact with me, is the simple opening fact that the Oilers and Flames have almost had way too much going on with each other this offseason in terms of player swaps. I don't know if, which one you want to start with first. Do you want to start with goaltending? Doesn't matter to me. Whatever you want to go All with. Right. Yeah, we can start there. So Smith and Talbot. Smith comes to Edmonton. This, this is the messed up situation that is Edmonton Oilers, Calgary Flames goaltending, correct? The Oilers might have a new straight-up starter, and pay their backup four and a half million dollars if Mike Smith takes the job out of camp. Now, David Riddick in Calgary looks to be the starter for you guys, but with Talbot coming in, how comfortable would you be if that's the case? Yeah, I don't know. Like Riddick, even at times last year, he struggled, right? And Mike Smith kind of took over, and Mike Smith kind of won the job from David Riddick. But unexperienced goalie, they said he he said over the off season that he feels good, that he's looking to play sixty plus games this year, so. I think they're going to let him run with it and see where that goes. But, yeah, if Riddick starts to trouble, I don't think Calgary will have any problem throwing in Cam Talbot to, to try and get some wins and some points to kind of stay even in the tight Western division. Well, and on the Oilers' side, too, you sit here and you think, well, Mike Smith, if he's going to be that steadying presence for the Oilers, Miko Koskinen just has to play 40 games-ish, kind of the similar setup between Talbot and Koskinen last year until Talbot's trade to Philadelphia. Well, Suddenly, okay, is that is that exactly why you're paying Miko Koskinen four and a half million or not? But I don't think, as an Oilers fan, other than you as a Calgary fan, anyone's going to complain if Mike Smith steals the show and Miko Koskinen holds his own, right? Yeah, no, not at all. Mike Smith, you know, veteran goalie, he's been around the league a long time, had a lot of stops, but even back in his days as Arizona, he was like one of the top goalies back then, right? He's just steady. As soon as he steps into the net, you know what you're getting from Mike Smith. Calm, cool, collected. Stops a lot of rubber too, right? Like that Calgary Colorado series, like two games he faced over a hundred shots. Like, oh. whoa, well, what else do you need from the guy, right? Like, so interesting, interesting dynamic there. But I think you're probably right. They're probably going to look to to split probably probably like 60-40, maybe even 50-50, depending on depending on how it goes there in Edmonton. And you're not you're not talking for for the people that don't know ratios. You're not talking sixty games, forty games. There's not a hundred games in the NHL. It's sixty percent, forty percent. Yeah. Just want to clarify that. But uh, so okay, Smith Talbot. Sure, it's an interesting storyline. But I think I think we've got a lot more interesting storyline somewhere else in terms of the Oilers and Flames trading players around. Yeah, uh, James Neal for Milan Lucic. <laughs> That came way out of left field. I didn't expect that one. What about you? Well, actually, probably a month prior, I did a video. There was a rumor that James Neal might be coming to Edmonton for Milan Lucic. And I mean, the amount of like craziness that ensued in the comments back then prior to the trade was absolutely insane. And then you end up having the trade take place. And you're like, okay, sure. I, I'm not going to sit here and say I called it because I was just talking about rumors. But heck of a trade. And now the question is, I mean, your head coach and Bill Peters is really excited about what Milan Lucic brings to the lineup. 
do you buy the hype or do you say no i think it's going to be the same old story from edmonton no, I, I buy into the hype. You know, Luchik just did, just didn't work out at Edmonton, right? His first two years in Edmonton were great. And then all of a sudden, it just didn't work out for him. But he's motivated. He looks good. Feels good. So he can. there's not a lot of pressure coming into Edmonton, right? Man for Boston, Peter Shirelli, six million bucks, right, to come in and produce Calgary. He can just come in, play his game, see fit where he is. So... A lot of pressure coming off Milan Lucic this year, and I think he's he's due for a bit of a bounce back here this year. Well, and you guys, too, got him at a $750,000 discount. So in terms of contract, how comfortable are you with the Milan Lucic contract? It, it is what it is, right? You got to, especially with when you're paying James Neal that much to play on the third line, right? Lucic kind of fits that role better, right? Bigger body, physical. Lucic's probably in for like a 10, maybe 15 goal season, 40 point season kind of kind of where I'm looking at, maybe even more, right, back in his first year at Edmonton, right? He was, I think, closer to 60 points that year. So I think he can do that too. But the biggest thing with Luchik is from that Calgary-Colorado series, Colorado just ran over Calgary. Like, no physical presence. So I think that's what Luchik can do. And a little bit of protection for Johnny Goudreau, right? Instead, all the hand slashes, the hacking and whacking, there's that physical force that, hey, if you touch Johnny, there's going to be some retribution coming your way. So... So if you're if you're talking about protecting Johnny Gaudreau, do you do you see like Bill Peters mentioned that Lucic is going to see that elevated first line time this year, or do you see him as he said first off as a top nine forward kind of deal? Yeah, it all depends, right? They with Milan Lucic can kind of play up and down your lineup. Right, he can play on the top line, he can play on the third line, even on that second line, right? He doesn't hurt you which way, but it all depends, right? Because last year James Neal was supposed to be on that top line, but right out of training camp, Elias Lindholm came in and stole that number number one job with Johnny Goudreau and Sean Monaghan, and they were just dynamic. So it all depends, right? If they're struggling and the lines aren't working, then I could see kind of Bill Peters doing some line shuffling, but I think they're going to probably start the same as last year, Johnny, Monty, and Lindholm, and then have Luchik kind of in that top top six, maybe top nine role like, like you alluded to. Okay. And then let's go back to the question board here and get into, I think this one's the one that, Maybe we don't want to talk about too much because it's been the whole off-season mess for the NHL, not just the Oilers, not just the Flames, but uh, the RFA off-season market. Uh, you've still got Matthew Kachuk outstanding, the cap space there surrounding that, and the questions there. And, of course, the Oilers finally just solved the S. Puliarvi mess for now last week, or well, depending what you consider a Sunday. Do you consider it part of the pre previous week or the new week? I don't know. But uh, the yes, Puli RV mess seems over for now, but you guys still have the Matthew Kachuk mess going on. What do, you, what do you think is kind of the solution there? Yeah, I think everybody's just waiting for some of the other dominoes to fall, like Mitch Marner, Patrick Laine, that sort of thing, to kind of gauge where these guys are going to get paid. Same with, like, Brock Besser, right? There's so many RFAs that are just waiting for contracts. But the tough thing for Calgary is, since, like you said, with the cap space, Nobody wants to be paid more than Johnny Goudreau, but I think when he signed that deal way back then, like the RFA market was different, right? That's what the market demanded. So I think Kachuk, like you're looking at like seven, seven five range, maybe even eight. Oh, I know it's tough, right? Because somebody might offer sheet him at that, right? Like Kachuk's a Kachuk's a beast, right? Good player. So it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out. Okay, and if if you had to ideally choose between taking the picks for an offer sheet or re-signing Kachuk and going the whole cap space route, which one are you most comfortable with at that $8 million range? Yeah, I'd rather just sign Kachuk, right? You know what, you know what you're getting with them, right? 30 goals last year, tied for second on the team with 34 goals last year, right? Big physical body, can play both ways, right? He's great offensively, great defensively. Kind of like that agitator role, like the guy that gets under your skin. So I'm more comfortable paying Kachuk at eight than taking the first-round draft picks and the compensation for, for the offer sheet, but it all depends, right? Maybe maybe there's a trade too, right? If they can't get a deal done, maybe there's something along the lines there, but I think they're trying to get this deal done and before the season starts. They don't want it to linger like the William Nylander situation kind of for Toronto. They kind of how, saw how that played out, so... I think they're pushing to get the deal done before the season starts. Okay. And then I guess that, that kind of wraps up all the off-season stuff. This is where we get into the whole 
games starting to be played. There's five of them on the calendar for the Oilers and Flames, not counting the two preseason tilts and the two rookie game tilts. So, I mean, if you're Tyler Benson on the Oilers side, guys, and for us as Oilers fans, you know, while Tyler Benson seems to be a good chance at that top six, if he performs in camp, he could potentially play nine whole games against the Edmonton Oilers or anyone from that rookie camp. If they go the whole gamut of the games, they could play nine games against the Flames this year. There's a lot of games against the Flames, and that means a lot of, you know what, the whole mess that is Oilers Flames hockey, right? Just uh, like you said, just a complete mess, right? Like, so you get some high-scoring games, you get five-four shootouts, and then the other the other games you get one nothing grind them out games, right? It's just the animosity between these two teams. They just hate each other, kind of like any rivalry, right? Like Toronto Boston, Toronto Montreal, same type of deal. It's it's just craziness when these two teams. It doesn't matter where they are in the standings either. Calgary could be one, Edmonton zero, and it's it's almost kind of a pick 'em, right? It's yeah. it's crazy in that regard. So, okay, I, 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 I'm terrible at remembering things. Everybody who's watching this would know. Have you watched both the Battle of Alberta in Edmonton and in Calgary or just in one? I've only seen it in Edmonton. I haven't seen it in Calgary in the Saddle Dome, so I really can't say too much on that. But I know you've seen a couple, yes. saw a couple games last year. How, how was that from the other side in Calgary compared to in Edmonton? Okay, that's exactly what I wanted to ask you. So we'll flip to you in a second here. I think... In terms of the way it goes as being the opposing fan on the road, I mean, from my perspective, Oilers, Oilers Nation, I believe it is. Yeah, see, it terrible at remembering. Oilers Nation online blog brought in a big busload of people. I was up in the press level in Calgary in the Saddle Dome, which is the rafters, basically, and absolute chaos up there. And when the building erupts in, in a chant for one side or the other, it just absolutely gets deafening up there because you've got all the noise rising from the bottom and you've got all the noise coming from the top and I really think especially in those tight-knit games like you said when it's a grinded out game it's getting greasy it's getting physical it really comes down to which side of the crowd is louder prouder and the guys feed off it the guys a hundred percent feed off it and that not only improves their offensive defensive goaltending performance but I think the chaos the mess itself gets better and I'd be interested to see if you're the same way from the Edmonton game you've gone to yeah no it was crazy like the Edmonton game I was at it's it's almost like 50 50 right the Calgary fans are coming in they're out an hour before the game they're tailgating other fans are walking by they're yelling at each other boo that's ugly jersey just the hate even before the game leading up to the game is is even crazy but like you said when the chance started it's almost like 50 50 you, you really can't even tell who's kind of the home team and in that regard, right? It's almost like a 50-50 split, which is which is just crazy to see. Okay, all right. Then this is this is my next question for you. If we're going to talk about the mess that is Edmonton Oilers, Calgary Flames relations on the ice, Shay, I think we got to go with uh, the obvious question here in terms of Game One, December twenty seventh, Calgary Edmonton. Retribution for the McDavid hit into the post. I mean, not necessarily saying it was a dirty play, not because I respect Giordano, and there's a hundred ways that play could go right. There's a hundred plays that play goes wrong, not necessarily one way or the other. But do you think just just for the fact it's Connor McDavid, just for the fact that it's Calgary Edmonton, is there going to be retribution in terms of that? Well, yeah, I think so, right? Like you hit your star player, right? There's going to be some retribution. Maybe somebody goes over, and gives Giordano a little whack, or or something happened, or we could see, like, just a massive line brawl, right? Like that Vancouver game Calgary played, remember? They each started with, like, their third or fourth line, and it was yeah. just right off the draw. Everybody just went at each other, right? So, but I, I think there is, right? Like, especially because Edmonton wants to protect their star, right? They, they want to mention to the league, hey, like, if you hit Connor, there's, there's retribution coming your way, right? So I think there is, and kind of like you said before, it was just kind of an unfortunate play. I don't think it was dirty by any means, but it's just... Just, just a really tough player, right? Okay, so this has run on for almost 15 minutes now. I think usually an average Dolany TV video, as many of you guys would know, would stretched out to just over 10 minutes most days. However, series prediction, Shea, five games set for the Oilers and Flames. We saw them split it last year. Equally great games, all four. Well, what do you see out of a Battle of Alberta where... People are saying the Oilers did nothing to get better. In fact, many think they got worse. 
and a Calgary Flames team that ended up first in the Pacific Division and exited in the first round of the playoffs to a good Colorado team, but not necessarily a great Colorado team. Yeah, I know. It, it's interesting adding the other game this for this year, right? I don't think – I think the last couple of years it's only been four, right? So adding that extra game, it's it's going to be – it's. It's going to be like 3-2, I think. I don't think one team's going to run away with it, like 5 nothing or like 4-1. I think they're going to be split. It's, I think it's going to be 3-2 for the, the Calgary side. That's kind of a homer pick for me because I'm a Flames fan. But, yeah, but I think even though the Edmonton Oilers really didn't do nothing, they really can't do a lot, right? They're, they've got so much cap problems, right? They don't have a lot of assets to trade. I think everybody just needs to be a little bit better other than Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, and Ryan Nugent Hopkins, right? So... Okay. And then, then the, looking at the Calgary side, they President's Trophy team, they had a great year last year, but it's going to be tough to repeat, right? Everybody kind of knows who they are now, right? A lot of the other teams got better. So it's it's going to be it's going to be a dogfight in the West. There's probably like eight or nine, maybe ten teams that are trying to fight for those eight playoff spots. So it's going to be a tight race all the way around. Okay, well, I, I think, honestly, I, I, I can't argue any other way other than the fact that 3-2 the other way for the Oilers, that's the same thing. I mean, that first game I went to in Calgary in November, what was it, 17th, that was a fantastic game all around. The Oilers had the lead early, they blew it. It was kind of the definition of the Oilers season in a lot of ways, but it was just one fantastic game, absolutely kind of one of those legendary ones you go to and you're like, holy crap, this is what the rivalry is about. And I think in terms of everything you said, it, it's exactly what this year is going to be all about. This is what the rivalry is all about. We get that extra game. We get a chance for one team to win over the other. That's going to be good. And, I mean, then that begs the question. If the Oilers do something and the Flames get back to the playoffs as well, you looking forward to a playoff matchup if it's there? No, oh, that'd be unreal. Like, I don't even think I was alive the last time these two teams had it. How to play off rivalry against each other. Probably have to go back, what, like 90s? Maybe even 80s? I don't even know. Well, I, I, I can tell you where I'd have the math on that. Last year's Battle of Alberta preview on Dolany TV would have it. Last year I called it as one of the best since the 90s or 80s. And you know what? It, it lived up. It lived up. It had those controversial moments. It had the greasiness. But this year, I think, with the McDavid stuff, the whole five games instead of four and just the preseason stuff and the fact that this year both teams are vying to do exactly what they did last year or even better than last year i think it's going to be a bloodbath on the ice over the winter that's the best part this ain't just october march april this is all winter long and this is going to be getting good all year long for sure it's interesting too, right? Like you said, first game's like December 27th. We still got a long time to wait, and we're already jacked up for this series. It's it's unreal. I just oh. wish they had a game like earlier, right? Maybe like start off the year like they did. Was it last year or the year before where they kind of had the back to back, and McDavid just went rapid, and everyone's like, "Holy, this is this is crazy." Yeah, no, it's gonna it's gonna be a hell of a good time. Shay, I appreciate you joining me in today. Thanks for having me, Dolly. It was right. great. That's Shay. I'm Tyson. This is Stolen TV. Ladies and gentlemen, that was your 2019 2020 Calgary Flames, Edmonton Oilers. What is it, Shay? The Battle of Alberta. Preview here on Dolan TV. I am up on out of here.